Hey, I'm Baruch Halevi, also known as B. Welcome to Soul Centered. Soul Centered is a spiritual center for meaning, for purpose, for healing in the afternoon of life. What's the afternoon of life? The second half of life. Are you in the second half of life? Then you must listen to this conversation because it's a conversation I bet you've never had unless you've listened to the first two videos because this is part three, What's My Name? This one's called, What in the Hell is My Name? And I'll tell you a little bit about why and what's the difference the bottom line, this question is not insignificant. In fact, it is ultimate significance. It is the question, say the mystics, the Kabbalists, that you will be asked on your deathbed. You were asked in kindergarten. You're asked at cocktail parties. You're asked at business lunches. You're asked on the street. You meet somebody random and they say, what's your name? And the angels are going to ask you this question. And if you can't answer it, then you don't get into heaven. Is that literal? No, I don't think it's literal, but it's figurative that you can't get into that place of divinity, of your highest self, of true spirit. My teacher, Dr. Viktor Frankl, calls self-transcendence. You can never get past yourself if you believe this is who I am. Because let me assure you, I had more of this back in the day, a little less of this. This is not who I am. If I believe this is who I was, I'd be a neurotic mess. But I, my other teacher, Dr. Wayne Dyer, says this is the flesh suit. A little more fleshy than it used to be. This is the flesh suit. It's what I walk around and occupy space and do my real work, my real job, which is to not only have a name, but know my name and live my name. So as we spoke about in the first and second parts of this video series, it comes from the idea of Moses standing in this moment with the divine, saying, what's your name? And what was the divine's response? God's response was, Ehiyeh, Asher, Ehiyeh. I will be that I will be, or I am that I am. And that's the name of the infinite. Because the moment you try and quantify God, it's no longer God. G-O-D doesn't exist. The only thing that exists are your experiences of this unfolding, infinite, not quantifiable source of life and light. The mystics actually call... Um, one of the names for God, or Le'en Sof, unending, infinite light. And you can't grab it, you can't quantify it, but you can be in its presence, you can know it and feel it, and when you are, you know you're in this divine spiritual moment. And the moment you get behind a camera and you try and take a picture of it, it leaves. I had this experience many times, um, you know, deep, profound moments at a beach or or with a with the pregnancy, the birth of one of my four kids, where I want to just capture the moment. I didn't take out the video camera and take pictures at my wife's uh, birthing, but she would kill me. But I have tried this. It's called the, like the Disneyland phenomenon. You go to Disneyland and people are behind the camera trying to capture it. The moment you try and capture it, you've left the moment. The moment you try and quantify the divine, you've left the infinite. And the moment you say, I am Baruch, I am B, I am Dad, I am Rabbi, I am Logotherapist, I am Son, I am Smart, I am Dumb, I am Happy, I am Sad. All of these things are our names. The problem is, is they reduce us to this box, and we are not meant to be in a box. We are here to be like the Divine. What does that mean? We are here to be infinite and limitless and fearless and unending light, but we don't live that way. We don't live that way because last video we talked about fear. Fear makes us get smaller and constricts us physically, right? You hunch over, your blood, ses blood vessels constrict, you take sh more shallow breaths, but also figuratively, we start living smaller lives. We start conforming to those names. Yes, being a mother is a beautiful piece of who you are, but that is not who you are. And how do you know that? How do I know that? Because I counsel people, especially women, but men and women, midlife, later in midlife, the afternoon of life, sunset of life, when their kids aren't there anymore, don't need them like they used to. This empty nest thing is really a question of what in the hell is my name? Because my name were all those little people running around the house, and now they're not running around the house. Now they don't need me. 
Not like they did. They always need you, but not like they did. And if you believe that's all that I am, that's who I am, then you're going to be rocked when that time comes and the universe says, what's your name? Or you're a wife or a husband and the marriage ends. What's my name? Or your parent passes on. Yes, you're still their child, but the role has changed and you need to be evolving and growing. That's the point. What in the hell is my name? Because all of those are pieces of me, but they are not me. They are not you. And when we allow ourselves to be put into that box or when we put ourselves in that box, ultimately we are living small, fearful lives. I love this, this uh, passage by Marianne Williamson. She writes, she sums it up so beautifully. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that's in us. It's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Why are we here? To live out our divine presence, which is to be large, infinite, powerful beyond measure to live in love, not in fear. And when you do, when you don't allow yourself to be confined to those names, good ones, bad ones, everything in between, when you live from this place of love and light, you inspire others. One of my most important teachers, Dr. Viktor Frankl, embodies this. He went, like so many others, to the Holocaust. And like so many others in Auschwitz, they put a number on his arm because they tried to reduce him to this number. They tried to say to him, that's what you are. You are no longer your name. You are just a number. We can't kill names, murder names, but we can murder numbers. We can put numbers into the gas chamber. You're just a number. So go along with it. But great men and women during the Holocaust never accepted that number as who they were. Dr. Frankel never was in prison. He might have been in prison, but he was never in prison. He was always free. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knew why he was here. He knew his name. And because of it, he inspired others to know their name. Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Rosa Parks, Anne Frank, the list goes on and on. Malala, the, the, these are men and women who in the face of terror, demonstrated that you don't have to succumb to that fear. You don't have to live in the box that they put on you because of your color, because of your religion, because of your sexuality, because of your fill in the blank. You don't have to accept that. That is not your name. You are not any of those things. Those are pieces of you, but you are a spark of the divine. You are something so much bigger than these limiting boxes that the world puts on you or that you put on yourself. I'm going to end with this Kabbalistic tale teaching. It says that we have three names. The name that our parents put on us. And again, our technical name, but more than our technical name. The expectations, the hopes, the dreams, the fears. They put those things on us. And our contemporaries, the people around us, put those same things on us. But we also have a third name, the name of our parents give us, the name the people around us, all of those different names, the name that we choose. You get to choose your name. Literally, you can change your name. I don't encourage it. It's very complicated and nothing really changes. I found out the hard way. But figuratively, you get to choose your name. You get to choose I am fill in the blank. You get to choose I am period. That's it. I am evolving. I am a child of the divine. I am infinite and I will not accept these titles and these roles and these limits as all that I am. They're a part of who I am. They're the part of the way you experience me, but they are not the entirety of my experience. I am divine light. I am infinite love and I am here to radiate that, to liberate those around me by living my name. So live your name. It's a deep, 
powerful, profound idea and question and journey. I'm here to answer questions you have about the, the limitations of name, the power of names, and how you do this in your life, how you take back your true name. I would love to hear from you. Shoot me an email. Um, just the letter B at mysoulcenteredED.org or jump over to mysoulcenteredED.org and you can get our program. I have a program called um, Choose Your Own Way. It's an inexpensive program to help you find or at least get going on the path of finding your name. Lots of opportunities and I'd love to hear from you, work with you. So give me a shout. Until the next time, get out there and live your name. Shalom, salam, namaste. Peace.